Hi, I'm George, and we'll be making this wallpaper for your computer with a Happy St. Patrick's Day theme to it. Now, these same techniques I'll be showing you here can be used for making other wallpapers as well. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe as well. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon a couple times for notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll be making this image here size to fit as wallpaper, and I'll show you where those options are in just a second. Now, if you want to make this as a card instead, I'll also show you where you can set that up as well. You'll need to change some of the sizes for the card, but all of the steps will remain the same aside from just the sizes. We'll also be working with almost everything here right inside of Photoshop Elements, except for this one bit of clip art right there. I just found that little guy online, and there's a link for downloading that on my website. You'll find a link for that, of course, in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get this project started. Let me just close this down. There we go, get that out of the way. The first thing we need to do is to set up a file at the right size to work as wallpaper for your computer screen. Now you need to know what size your computer screen is set at, and let me show you where you can find that. This will vary a little bit depending upon your computer and your video card and so forth, but I'll show you the basic place to go ahead and take a look for that to find out what the size is for your computer screen. Here we are at the desktop. Just right click on the desktop, and then come down to screen resolution right here and then you should see it right there where it says resolution that's the size of your screen and different versions of windows will all be basically the same place to find this information now we know the screen resolution for this particular monitor we can go ahead and set up our file to match that screen resolution all right we're back inside of photoshop elements go up to file come down to new and blank file and then in here it says document type Normally, it'll be saying default Photoshop Elements size. Just change that down to web right there. It should be saying a resolution of 72, which is correct for computer screens. And then here, where it has size, click on that, and then choose the size in here of your computer monitor's desktop. There's the web minimum, most common. Mine is set right now at 1920 by 1080. So this should match the screen resolution of your desktop. Then choose OK, and there we go. Now all the rest of these steps will work exactly the same. Now if you want to do this project as a card instead, let me show you where that is. And that's File, New, Blank File. Set that at the default Photoshop Elements size, and make sure your resolution is at 300 right down here, and it's a 6x4. Now one thing to be aware of on using this as a card is I'm using a lot of greens, and greens don't always print that well. So you may need to do some adjustments on the color values, maybe just darken the whole image down a little bit so that it prints out better. That's the only real problem with working with a lot of green is that it tends to not print that well. So there you go, that's the settings for doing this as a card. Okay, so here's our desktop background size. The first thing we need to do is to put a new background in here for the file. And I'll do that down at the graphics right there. And at the very top of here we have backgrounds. I'll just scroll this clear to the top. There we are. And if we scroll down just a little ways, there's a lot of stuff in here as you can see, but just a little ways down, we get a few things in here for St. Patrick's Day. And they're right in this area here. These, these four are kind of St. Patrick's Day themed things. And the one you want is that one right there. It's called Clover Stream. Click on that. If it has a little blue triangle like this in the upper right hand corner, it's going to need to go online to download this from Adobe. Your copy of Photoshop Elements doesn't come with all these backgrounds pre-installed. They're downloaded as you need them. So if you have that little blue triangle, make sure that you have a current internet access connection running to download that from the Adobe website. It just takes a moment or two. It's pretty fast. Okay, so there's our first one. Let's now go here to Layers, and we're going to make a duplicate of this layer. So right-click and Duplicate Layer. Choose OK. Then hide that one layer. Go back to the graphics. And we'll now add in a second layer in here. I'll scroll down some more. This is down just a little ways. And there's some starburst things. We'll see those here, sunburst things. See them just a bit. Way down here. There we go. These three sunburst effects. You want the middle one, which is called sunburst green. Click on that. Same thing. Go back to layers and then right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer and okay 
and then one more time back to graphics and we'll do a third one as well so we're actually stacking three of these backgrounds together to make our own new background the third one is right here it's just called swish to it's right down below that one right there swish to bring that one in go back to our layers and that's what that looks like so there we go we now have these three backgrounds all stacked one on top of another with the final one working as the actual background for the file let's go ahead and show these all we now need to blend these top two into this one background. So go to the top layer here. This is one that is called Clover Stream. Let me just name that here so you can see it easy. There you go, Clover Stream. On this one, we want to set that blend mode to soft light, and that's right down there. Okay, down to our next one. This is the Sunburst. Let's just rename this one. The name of that background file was Sunburst Green. On this one, we want to change the blend mode down here to linear burn. That's right there. There we go. So now we're seeing all three of those layers all blended together into this one background layer here. I kind of like this trick because this background has these double swoops and these dots in it. This one brings in these sun ray effects. And then the top one brings them some clovers and some more matching swooshes in there. So it builds a real nice complex looking background just by overlapping three layers and using blend modes between those three layers. And move up here to the top layer right here. And we're going to add in one little graphic. Go back to our graphics right here and then change this to graphics. There it is. And there's a lot of pictures in here as you can see. I'm just going to scroll up slowly here with the mouse. You can see there's just a lot of stuff. There's some St. Patrick's Day text in here you want to use one of those, those are always kind of fun, real easy to use. But I'm looking for a clover. Here's also a rainbow that sometimes works well. Pot of gold also works well for a St. Patrick's Day card. But up just a little bit, we'll have a clover up here and we'll use that clover just as kind of a background element to put in behind the beginning of our text. But you can see how much stuff is actually in here, how many options and choices you have inside these included graphics inside of the Photoshop Elements program. And here we go. We have two clovers. Actually, we have three. These are four leaf clovers, like in here. Kind of matches that. And then this is a three leaf clover. Now, technically, your three leaf clover is a shamrock and your four leaf clover is a four leaf clover. And to be perfectly accurate about this, the four leaf clover doesn't relate with St. Patrick's Day. It's also a good luck charm, but it doesn't relate specifically to St. Patrick's Day, and the three-leaf clover does. So let's just double-click on this, and that brings it in. As you can see here, the color is off a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the color to match this a bit closer. Now, we need to do a color shift on this using hue saturation, so I'll just give you the numbers for that. I had to kind of eyeball this to get it exactly right, and if you want to, I'll show you how that's done but it'll also give you the final numbers. Now, the reason why I'm doing a hue saturation adjustment on this as opposed to just copying the screen and filling this is because if you do that, you'll get hard, rough edges. I want to keep my edges nice and smooth. Okay, so back to our layers. Here we go. There it is, Clover 1 right there. And let's apply a hue saturation to this. Go up to Enhance, come down to Adjust Color, and Adjust Hue Saturation. Now this is going to ask you to simplify the layer, so choose OK, and that converts it from being a vector graphic image where you can resize and have nice clean layers, nice clean edges, into a regular graphics layer. But we'll still have good edges as long as you keep it basically the same size or similar size, which we'll be doing. OK, on this one now, if we look at these two, this is too blue and it's too light. So I know that those two things need to be adjusted, the blues and the lights, and it's a little bit low on saturation. So I know I'll need to move the hue away from the blue side, kind of like that. I know I'll need to increase my saturation a bit, kind of like that. And I know I'll need to bring the lightness down. And that's just eyeballing it. But you can get pretty close, pretty fast like this. Now the numbers that I used, to be real specific here, I used negative 28, and I used a positive 33 on the saturation. And then I used a negative 22 on the lightness. And that's pretty close. Maybe go just a little bit darker in here. You know, 26 maybe. Looks pretty good. That's good enough for our image in here. So that was negative 28 plus 33 and a minus 26. And that's real close. Okay, back to fit screen. Let's now take that clover in our move tool. There we go. And I'll just put it over here. 
Let's make it a bit larger, grab the corner, bring it up in size just a little bit, come outside the corner, see how the arrow kind of goes into a bendy arrow right there? Click at that point, you can then bend this around, and I'll give it just a little kind of tilt over here to the left hand side, and stick it right about there. There's just kind of a blank space over in here, and that helps fill that blank space up. There's without, and there it is with. Okay, let's now put our text on here. So I'll reset the colors, set the foreground at white, grab the type tool, and the typeface I'm using in here is called AR Blanca Regular, and I believe this comes with elements. If it doesn't, you know, any typeface is fine on this. This is a person of choice. I just kind of like the bit of an italic kind of a brush stroke effect on this one. But that's not really critical. The size is 72 points. Doesn't matter what the setting is down here, center, left, right, doesn't really matter since we're only doing just the one line of text. And then click inside here any place. And let's type in Happy St. Patrick's Day. Make sure I get my apostrophe in there to make it all correct. And exclamation point. There we go. Now let's put that so the happy is kind of in front of that clover right there. And that's a whole real reason for that. It's kind of giving me a, a place to anchor that text on top of that clover. Okay, so here's the first level of this. If you want to use this as your background, that's fine. We're all set to go. If you want to have it without that text, that's fine as well. So we already are at that point. If you want to use it now as background, you need to just simply save this out as a JPEG file, and we'll finish that up after we put our leprechaun in. Now the leprechaun is clip art. I found this online, and I have a link for this on my page for this, the materials page for this video, and find a link for that, of course, in the description. And for this, we'll use the place command. So that's file, come down to place. I'm already in my right location for this, and it's right there choose place and then brings him in kind of centered on the page you can see right here now let's bring him down right down here now he's on the wrong layer position in here he's kind of behind a couple of things so I'll just take this layer I'll drag this above everything above all the backgrounds in there so he's on the same layer or just below that clover right here okay so just kind of position him and somewhere in there looks pretty good and there we go, that's the background is finished. Now, if you want to, again, save it out, there are three ways to save this out. One is to save it out without any of those things on there, or leaving that one clover in over here, or one shamrock on that left-hand side. So that's just a straight background. The second way is with text, and the third way is with the leprechaun in here. One last thing you might want to do is put a drop shadow on the text when you're using it with the leprechaun so there's better separation in here. You don't need that without him, but with him, it's not a bad idea to have a little bit of separation. So go to our text layer, go up here to layer, come down to layer style and style settings, and choose drop shadow. Let's set the angle at 135. It's kind of off to the upper left-hand corner up here. Set your size at zero, makes it a hard edge. Set the distance at six, and let's set the opacity at about 90%. And there it is, nice little drop shadow. So again, that works out well if he is on the page. If he's not, let's get rid of him. Then I'd remove that drop shadow. And that's easy to do. Just go over here where it says FX, double click on that, and so uncheck that, and there it is without that drop shadow. Okay, let's now see how to save this out. I'll put him back in and the drop shadow back in again. Just click that, choose OK. The last step now is to adjust the values for the whole project. So go up here to the very top layer right here. And we'll add in an adjustment layer up here. Layer, come down to new adjustment layer and do levels right there. Where it says use previous layer, don't check that. We want this to apply to everything together. Okay, now on this one, it's kind of a personal preference. You can go a little bit lighter like I have here or a little bit darker like I'll be showing you in just a second. It's up to you on the final look of this. Lighter is a bit more cheery, darker may be easier to see your icons on your desktop. So I normally go out a little bit darker on my desktops. Now the setting I used in here, I brought the blacks in a bit. That brings down the dark and makes a bit more contrasty as well. And I have mine set at 46. On the whites, the brights on the right-hand side, I brought that in up to about 223. I'll just type that in here, 223. And then on the mid-tone values here, it pulls to the right. It darkens those down a little bit. And that came down into the low 70s. I actually used 0.71 
right there. It just darkens it down just a little bit again. It's a bit more contrasty, a little bit darker, and for my personal preference using it as a desktop, my icons show up better like this. So I'll go ahead and do that. There's before and there's after right there. And choose OK. And there it is. There's our finished Happy St. Patrick's Day desktop wallpaper. Now, if you want to use this, you'll have to, of course, save this out for use on the desktop. But before that, let's go ahead and save the file. File. Let's do a save as. There's my original. I'm going to just call this one St. Patrick's Day. Pretty easy. Without any punctuation in there, choose Save. Now, let's do a Save As. Go up to File. And again, either one, Save As or Save for Web. Either one works on this one. I'll just use the Save As. Save it out to the JPEG setting and choose Save. In here, just make sure that the quality is either at 12 or maximum. Same thing. So, slider control all the way to the right or maximum or 12. And choose OK. We've now saved that out as a JPEG file. Now, we can use this file as a desktop. Let's go ahead and close this one down and get this out of the way as well. Now, right click on the desktop and choose Personalize. And this will show you your different themes running on your computer. And the first thing you want to do is you want to save your theme, your current theme, if you haven't already done that. That way you can always go back and change it back to that theme. I have mine saved right here. Now, let's find that new background. Come down here, it says Desktop Background. Click on that. And then browse to find the location where you saved your background. I have mine saved right there in Clip Art. And there it is. That's our saved file. And then choose Save Changes. Now, if it disappears like that, don't worry about that. Let's just change it over and change back again here. It'll come back again. Sometimes it'll go to black, but I'll show you how to fix that. Once we're at this point, make sure you save it now. Click on Save Theme. And then Save. There we go. I can now go back and forth. There's my St. Patrick's Day. There's my Epcot dark look right there. And then St. Patrick's Day again. That's all set. And then close this down. Now, if it goes away at this point, all you have to do is right click, go to view, and then show and hide your desktop icons. Or hide and show one or the other, and there's your background again. Okay, so there it is. That's how you can make a St. Patrick's Day wallpaper for your computer. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe as well. And to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, Take a look at my complete training course. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.